Welcome to the State in History, a.k.a. TDH. This show is all about the events that occurred on this date in years past, uh, both recognized by other historians, but mainly things uh, we personally find intriguing enough for us to bring to you. The sources of this information come from the smart device application Today in History, What Happened Today in History, Historical Calendar, and the website on thestate.com. For links to those sources, the music done by Carrera, and anything else potentially interesting, check the underbar in the description below. Anyway, I am Ao Xander, and today I'm joined by... Yo, it's me, Jay Swanson again. What's good, guys? Mm-hmm. And we also have um, a Doom Guy, Let's Country Broncos Ride, yeah. Um, he's here somewhere. Uh, he's probably AFK, though. But anyway, today is Freya's Day, a.k.a. Friday, January 27th, 2023. So, uh, do you want to start us off today, Mr. Swanson? Uh, you can start it. It's all good. And all then right. I can go... We'll start off here in the year 98. Trajan became Roman Emperor after the death of Nerva. Huh. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, well, like a couple days ago, we spoke about uh, one emperor getting uh, murdered by his own Praetorian guard. Uh, I believe that was Caligula. Um, or Nero. No, Nero. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. Uh, anyway, we're going to move on up here to 1591. One hell of a time jump there. Scottish schoolmaster Dr. Jean Fian was burned for witchcraft at Castle Hill. Edinburgh by order of King James VI. This was part of the Berwick Witch Trials. I oh. did not know about those, but yeah. Um, so, like, what was uh, somebody's messing with my water pipes? Um, yeah, so I, I knew there were witch trials going on beyond just the Salem ones, and yeah, here's one of them. So, and then we got a uh, pirate attack in 1671. Um, actually, uh, yeah, okay. Yep, 1671, Welsh pirate Henry Morgan landed at the gates of Panama City. Ooh. Hey, isn't that a name of a drink? That's crazy. Uh, I believe that is Captain Morgan. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> who Wait. is the drink Captain Morgan? Uh, Captain Morgan is a brand of flavored rums. Uh, blah, blah, blah. It is named after the 17th century Welsh privateer of the Caribbean, Sir Henry Morgan. So this, oh, guy, look at so that. this is Captain Morgan. <laughs> oh, sweet. That was right. Awesome. Yeah. You <laughs> got a little captain in you? <laughs> I, I know I've seen it around, but that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, if you'd like, uh, you can uh, take a turn. We do three by three. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Six oh, six. okay. So did you do yours or did you read Yeah, I did my now? three. So, uh... Oh. Yep, you got right. 1687 and on. All right, so 1687, Charles Per. How do you say that? Uh, ju just uh, do your. Best I'll just guess. say Charles P. Yeah, Charles P. Poem. Charles P.'s poem, "The Age of the Lo uh, of Louis the Great," or Louis Louis the Great, read read out at the French Academy, part of the literacy quarrel of the ancients and the moderns. Oh. Hey, that's cool. So, uh, yeah, Charles Perrault, I think, uh, is a fairy tale writer. Oh, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. 1710, Tsar Peter the Great sets first Russian state budget. Ooh. So, uh, yeah, like, um, as in, like, uh, first the official Tsar. budget for, like, the entire country. Yeah. I guess. Uh, in uh, 1820, Russian in Antarctic. Oh my goodness, I can't breathe for crud. Okay, expedition led to Fabian Galibavon. I don't even know Russian, but Belgish son discovered the continent of Ant Antarctica. Oh, huh. well, that's cool. And uh, let me give this name a shot. Uh, Fabian Gottlieb von Bellingshausen. Okay. And there we go. Mikhail <laughs> Lazarev. Yeah, I did not want to try that. Because if <laughs> I did, it would sound like uh, rubbish. Hey, you know, you got to start somewhere. At one point, I sounded like you, you know, and I've been doing this almost every day for over a year now. So, like, you, you, learn, you learn a thing or two. I believe in you, man. Nice. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> and uh, was that your three? Yeah. Uh, yes. All right. 
We're going to move on up into 1825 during the Trail of Tears. The U.S. Congress approved Indian Territory, present-day Oklahoma, clearing the way for the forced relocation of the eastern Indian tribes via the Trail of Tears. Uh, really dark patch of history we got. And, uh, oh, wow. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, so I, I advise people to go look up the Trail of Tears. It was a really, really, you know, ugh, not good situation, so... And in 1880, Thomas Edison patented the electric incandescent lamp. Yeah, oh, wow. I wonder who uh, he stole that from. So. And we got some music history in 1895. Marius Petipa and Lev Ivanov's revival of Pitor Tchaikovsky's uh, ballet Swan Lake premiered in St. Petersburg. All right. And back to you, sir. All right. Uh, in 1924, Klaus Dunberg of Finland claims three gold medals in one day when he wins the 1,500 million, uh, 5,100, I believe. Wait, that's 500 million? No, the 1,500 yeah. meter and 5,000 meter. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. And all, all around speed skating events. At the Shamanix Winter Olympics, won 15, 15 mi million meter the day before. Yeah, the 5,000 meter. Uh, so yeah, this is the guy I believe uh, we spoke about yesterday. The first gold medal in Winter Olympics history, uh, I believe, what? was won by this guy or somebody else. Um, but it was for the U.S. Okay, so this is this is not the first guy then, because this is from Finland. The first gold medal in Winter Olympic history was won by a U.S. Uh, competitor. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was yesterday. And for the historic events, uh, 1924, Lenin placed in Maliseum in Red Square, Mos Moscow. Yep. Oh, so... Yep, Vladimir Lenin, that's where his body I still rests today, I believe. And, and for historic publication, there's... It's in 1926, physicist Erwin Schrondinger, Dinger, I can't even say that, publishes his theory of wave mechanics and present, presents what becomes known as Schrondinger equation... In, in quantum mechanics. Yep, what? you know of this guy. Uh, he was someone who abused his cat, Schrodinger's cat. You I think I heard of it. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's when you that's when he put a, a cat in a box, and you don't know whether it's alive or dead until you open the box. So it's a, uh, you know, that's uh, Schrodinger's cat. So this is the same well, guy. That's the guy oh, who wow. did that. Yep. And uh, yeah. you got one more. Uh, no, you got you did your three. All right. Uh, 1927, we have Australian Championships men's tennis. Gerald Patterson won his only home title, defeated countryman John Hawks, 3 to 6, 6 to 4, 3 to 6, 18 to 16. Crikey. And then 6 to 3. Holy crap. 18 to 16, mate. That is unprecedented. I had no, I did not know it can go that high. I guess they just kept tying or something. I, how is that even possible? It has to be eight to six. That has to be a mistake. There, I, I present this uh, challenge to our viewers. Yeah, um, if you can uh, let us know if this is real and how long was this match because this sounds incredible. And we got another Australian uh, Championships men's tennis, 1934. Englishman Fred Perry won his only Australian title, defeated Jack Crawford of Australia, six to three, seven to five, six to one. Well, that sounds more reasonable there. And then we got another Australian Championships Miss Tennis, 1936. Is this going to be a repeat of yesterday? I don't want to talk half the dang show in this accent. Adrian Quist won his first Grand Slam event, defeated fellow Australian Jack Crawford, 6 2, 6 3, 4 6, 3 6, 9 7. Yeesh. And back to you, sir. Oh, wow. On this day, the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941, Peruvian ambassador Ricardo Rivera. Scheiber warns American ambassador of Japanese assault on Pearl Harbor. Oh, wow. That's been... Wow, that was... Wow. Yeah, actually, uh, not too long ago, uh, actually earlier this month, obviously, um, there was some kind of, like, high 
U.S. Navy official or something uh, in 1941 uh, said that, uh, that the Japanese would probably attack Pearl Harbor or something like that. So they had like almost an entire year of like foreshadowing to act upon and they didn't because we didn't know what Japan would do, but we knew they would do something because we embargoed their oil and uh, they were a military juggernaut machine, you know, trying to take over everything and, you know, a cornered mouse strikes. So they attacked us and we basically let it happen to give us a reason to get into the war. Like, what? yeah, no, like there's a lot of things like that happening, like the Gulf of Tonkin that got us into Vietnam. Uh, there is a document that was declassified in the 90s, uh, very hush hush. Uh, that basically said that there was no, like, like North Korean vessel or anything like that in the Gulf of Tonkin. It was all made up to get us into that war. The same thing happened with, um, you know, when we wanted to get into the Spanish-American War. Uh, the same thing kind of happened with World War One. you know, like, we were, uh, we were a neutral nation, but we were supplying arms and, and munitions and, you know, food and various other supplies and whatnot to uh, the Allied powers. And the final straw, you know, to get us into the war was the sinking of the Lusitania, in which a lot of U.S. citizens died. But uh, they were transporting, you know, you know, stuff to the Allies. So, like, we we have a very dark history, you know, when you look at it and all that stuff. And then, of course, you know, September 11th, the towers went down, and for some reason, we we invaded Iraq that had absolutely nothing to do with Bin Laden. Um, so, you look at everything. Like, I, I think, like, in, in all, like, 300 some odd years, you know, give or take, of this nation's history, we've only been at peace for, like, a non-consecutive, you, you collect all the different times we've been at peace, it's been a total of, like, something like 7 or 11 years. Like, we've always been at war with something. So, it's crazy. Yeah, wow. Yeah, and I know I went off on a whole wild tangent there, so anyway, uh... Let's no, jump that, back that, up into 1944. <laughs> Your turn, sir. Right. Yep, my bad. Just yeah, so, you were sorry. good. I just I, you you were really informed me because I did not know that. But uh, okay, so another sporting uh, history event, but this time luckily not tennis. Uh, in 1944, Casey Stengel, the manager of the Boston Braves since 1938, resigns. Louis Panin. Per, per, Perny and Gudo Rugo and Joseph Manny by control of Boston Braves. Oh wow. Uh, I sounds, like baseball. Sounds like he he fired them or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Good. Ooh, that's a that's Okay, a big so one here for you. So in 1944 the siege of Lingard lifted by the Soviets after 880 days and more than 2 million Russians killed. Siege oh, wow. of Leningrad was one of the most, if not the most brutal and longest sieges in all of human history. It was a really, really rough battle and um, there's a good movie uh, called uh, uh, Enemy at the Gates. Um, if you make it for movie night tonight, remind me. We'll watch that. It's a good movie. But it's it's about uh, it's specifically about uh, this one famous uh, Russian sniper who, like, you know, it was real. Like, um, like his character was real at least. Uh, but it's about the Battle of uh, Leningrad, and um, it, it, it's rough. Like 880 days. Think about it. That's over two years. You know, there's 360 what? days in a year. Yeah. So. You're talking 710 some odd, you know, it's over two years. And like, you know, it got so rough. You can see in this picture, the little girls assembling uh, Soviet submachine guns. Like, because uh, Stalin actually uh, prevented, um, he ordered the citizens not to evacuate. So that way the soldiers uh, have like, you know, more of a of a reason to sit and defend. You know, their, their, you know, civilians were literally in the buildings with them, you know, during the whole thing. It was absolutely brutal. So, and I'm sorry I'm going on little uh, tangents. I just love talking about history. Oh, please be my guest. I mean, I'm willing to hear. So yeah. Yeah, we're gonna move on up to 1945. Soviet troops liberated Auschwitz and Birkenau concentration camps in Poland. Yep, we spoke about this yesterday when the Soviets found them, and this is when they liberated them. So, 
really like I, I can't imagine like uh, if you've ever seen Band of Brothers there's a scene where they come across one of the concentration camps and you know it's that's as real as it gets well uh, 1948 though this is interesting first tape recorder sold huh mm -hmm. but look at that and speaking of tape recordings, we got a musical finale here in 1951. Leonard Bernstein's musical Peter Pan, starring Gene Arthur and Boris Karloff, closed at Imperial, Imperial Theater, New York City, after 320 performances. That's not bad. All right, if you want another turn, uh, here we go. Alrighty, so the boxing title fight. In 1954, American boxer Archie Moore beats Joey Max. Maxim in 15 round you unanimous decision to retain his world light heavyweight title at the Orange Bowl Miami last of five lot of famous trilogy of fights all won by more oh wow Dang. then for music singles in 1956 RCE records releases Elvis Presley's single Heartbreak Hotel, his first million seller, written by May Boren, Axton, and Tommy Dur Durden. I've heard about this Heartbreak Hotel a couple of times this past year. So. And, oh, here's tennis again, I guess. Australians Men's Tennis Open. In 1958, Australian Champions Men's Tennis, Ashley Cooper, wins second straight Australian title beats fellow Australian Malcolm Anderson 756364. Wow. Are, are you trying to do a, uh, an Aussie accent there at the at the end? <laughs> I was trying, yeah. <laughs> I, I heard it. I'm like, hey, wait a minute. He's he's putting a little, little bit of that down on the twang and a, and a couple words there. I, I saw what you were doing there, mate. <laughs> And we yeah. moved up to 1961 here, Australian Championships Men's Tennis. Roy Emerson defeated fellow Australian Rod Lava, 1-6, 6-3, 7-5, 6-4, his first Grand Slam title. Crikey. Wow. Well, these two photos look like they're actually uh, in a match together right now. Yeah. We got uh, some music history, 1961. Leontine Price and Franco Corelli made debuts at the Metropolitan Opera in New York in Il Trovatore. Final curtain call lasts 35 minutes. Wow. Must have been a really great show. And then we got, uh, ooh, oh, man. 1967, a fire in the Apollo 1 command module killed astronauts Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger B. Chaff during a launch rehearsal. And there is some shady history behind that. There's a there's this conspiracy that, uh, that they were killed off um, because... Uh, as we all know, there was a lot of Russian incidents, a lot of, you know, like, uh, like there's been several incidents where uh, the, the, the rocket has exploded with the people on it. Um, there's obviously those uh, rumors that uh, they lost a couple people uh, uh, before Yuri Gagarin, the first recorded man in space. Um, there's um, uh, at least one audio file of uh, a, a woman screaming. Um, so... But uh, we were really trying to push, like both the Soviet Union and us, were really trying to push during the space race. And um, unfortunately, in this situation, it is believed, at least by me, um, that uh, they're just like, oh, well, screw it, let's just try it. And then it ended up in disaster and tragedy. Um, but there's a lot more darker things involved, like, uh, like something to do with, like, uh, they were trying to, like, I think Gus Grissom um, was... Uh, trying to speak out against the lack of, uh, of safety procedures and such so to shut him up they just uh, they killed him off I don't know there's a whole lot of things so like uh, anybody who uh, who's interested in any of that like you know there's a rabbit hole for you to go down Whoa. and then uh, in 1969 we have another Australian Opens Men's Tennis Rod Lavar took first leg of his successful Grand Slam uh, second Grand Slam uh, defeated Andres uh, Gameno of Spain, 6-3, 6-4, All right. Back to you, Mr. Swanson. All righty. Let's see. The appointment of interest. In 1969, Chuck Knoll is named head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, the youngest coach in NFL history at time. Oh. Wow. 
That's cool. What's, yeah. what's the youngest coach in NFL history? Yeah. That that does make me wonder now too. Yeah. Coach in NFL history. Uh, that would be McVeigh. He became the youngest NFL head coach in the modern era sure. when he was hired by the Rams in 2017 at the age of 30. And this is. Um, he had just won a Super Bowl last season. <laughs> He j- oh, he f- there he actually, is. He we start finally... talking about Super Bowl and Doom guy appears. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, no, no, he, no, he. It was his second Super Bowl appearance, and he won a second one. He didn't win the, se- the first one because he lost it to the to the Deflatriates <laughs> and their <laughs> cheating antics. That was, I believe, that was the season that that was the season. Actually, the Rams also cheated their way into the Super Bowl. It's one of the worst no-call pass interferences of all time. Oh, well, dang. Um, so let's see here. 1969, and when was Chuck Noll born? 1932. So he was, like, in his mid-30s. So. All right. I think you have, uh, uh, you have two more, yeah. Okay. Let's see. For historic events on... 19, in 1969, Ian Paisley sent, was sentenced to three years. Wait, what? Yeah, uh, it says here he was the first minister uh, of Northern Ireland, so maybe he had something to do with the IRA or something. Like, uh, there's, it's there's... like... That's so vague. Uh, well, let's see here. 1969. Let's check this out. Ian Paisley sentenced an Ulster protest... Uh, he was sentenced to three months in jail. Okay, that's something else. Um, well, this is uh, going to require a lot more research than we have time to do on the show. Um, but I think he has something to do with, um, you know, the Irish Republican Army, the Irish Nationalists, and all that stuff. Like, I'm not sure how much you know, if anything. But there's been this huge thing in Ireland for the since like the freaking forever. Um, like, they're trying to become independent of, of Great Britain. Um, and like there's uh, there's the Irish Free State, and then there's Northern Ireland, which I believe Northern Ireland be- is part of Great Britain. Um, and uh, there, they, like they, they, there's been like terrorist attacks. People have died, you know, bombings, shootings, you know, revenge Wait. killings, like all sorts of nasty stuff. You know? I have a question. Yes. Is that what the is that what those two different Irishes are or Irelands are? Like those the what people talk about when one say, oh yeah. Some want to separate from the British and some don't, I guess. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, that's part of that whole thing. Like, it's it's a quagmire, really. Like, Yeah, because I always wondered that. Because, I mean, I'll be honest, I'm Irish, but the thing is, I'll be honest, I, didn't, I don't know what's up. But if I had to say, if I had to pick for me at least, I wouldn't want to be part of Britain. I don't know, that's just me speaking. Yeah, I support an Irish, you know, free Ireland and a free Scotland, but... Uh... Uh, remind me after the show, uh, like, there's actually a video explaining why, uh, Scotland is most likely never going to be free, at least in the current time. It has all stuff to do with NATO and Russia and, and all that stuff, so, okay. but yeah. Anyway, uh, you have one more here. Yeah, oh, another Australian's tennis open, alright, in, uh, 1970, Australian opens men's tennis, Arthur asks, Beats big serving local Dick Surly 6 4 9 7 6 2. Big serving local Dick Creeley. That sounds like a porno. <laughs> That's why I was like, wait, what? <laughs> like, hold on. Oh yeah. my god. It was funny. You said big serving. My brain immediately like went to the dark side and I read ahead and I'm like, please don't be a bad name. Dick. Oh no. No. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Doom Guy, I don't know why you're hiding, uh, but uh, if you want to take a turn, it's your turn. Unless he's AFK again, because he's muted. I think he's AFK again. So that was that was funny though. We started talking about football, and he appeared, you know, through some kind of magic. So he'll pull up. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know why. I never know what's going on. I just kind of go with it. Anyway, 1972, we have the world premiere of Scott Joplin's rediscovered opera Tree Monisha at Morehouse College in Atlanta. All right. He's a ragtime composer, so... Hmm. Must have been from the 20s or something. Uh, he was born in... 
1868, died in 1917. Wow. He died in 1917, and this is 72. Like, that is a long time. So yeah, so the, yeah, rediscovered opera. So this guy's opera, just, you know, just floating around somewhere. We got a tele television premiere here in 1976. <clears throat> Pardon me. Laverne and Shirley, TV spinoff from Happy Days, starring Penny Marshall and Cindy Williams, premiered on ABC TV. And Happy Days had several uh, spinoffs. Uh, Mark and Mindy or something. So... And we got some more sports history here. In 1976, Viv Richard scored his first test century against Australia. And by the way, just a forewarning, um, when you read something verbatim and you feel like you've had a stroke, it's just cricket. Don't worry about it. Nobody understands cricket. Not one person who's ever done the show has understood anything about cricket. So don't feel bad if you get a cricket thing. You're just like, what the hell is a century? What's a wicket? What's a bowler? You know, what is what is a century? You're like, you just... Yeah. So... Anyway, uh, your turn, uh, Mr. Uh, I forgot, uh, Swanson. I was going to say yeah. Johnson. <laughs> it's all good. All right. My For the Golden much. Globe. In 1979, 36 Golden Globes, Midnight Express. John Voigget and Jane Fonda win. Never heard of Midnight Express. Yeah. For historic events, let's see. In 1980... Robert Mug Mugabe returns to Rhodesia after five years in exile. Dang. And he was a Zimbabwean president. So I uh, wonder what the whole story behind all that was. Did he go into exile and became president of Zimbabwe, or was he Zimbabwe? Where's Rhodesia? Let me let me look that up here, actually. Wait, exile is like, isn't that where like you can't be like in uh Yeah, exile is when you're banished. Like you're you're no longer allowed to be in that area. Uh, Rhodesia, where is Rhodesia? Is it, oh, it's in Zimbabwe. Um, okay, I guess I guess Rhodesia became Zimbabwe. I don't see a Rhodesia on here anymore. I knew about a Rhodesia. I guess it did become Zimbabwe. All right, so uh, so yeah, so it sounds like uh, he returned to Rhodesia and then he became the president of Zimbabwe. Which was Rhodesia. Alright. I think. Oh, well, another uh, sports history. So, 1982, Philadelphia Phillies trade. Shortstop Larry Boa and infielder Ryan Sandberg to Chicago Cubs for second baseman Ivan De, De Jesus or De Jesus. One of the two. De Jesus. But, ah. De Jesus is funnier. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. Oh God, here we go. We got an album release here in 1984. Milk and Honey album by John Lennon and Yoko Ono was released, featuring unreleased recordings made during the 1980 Double Fantasy sessions, including "Grow Old with Me." Yeah, Yoko Ono. Yeah, yuck. 1984 as well. Michael Jackson was uh, burned during filming for Pepsi commercial. I remember about that. Oh yeah, I remember that. Mm. I I saw that video. Yeah. It was everywhere. And in 1986, the 13th American Music Awards, Whitney Houston, Huey Lewis, and C. Gale won. Oh, oh my mom loves Whitney. That's crazy. <laughs> Is it just me? Wow. Like, she either has a spray-on tan, or... I don't know. But that does not look real. You know these Hollywood people like their spray-on, so... Anyway, back to you, sir. Uh, my bad, yeah, I was bugging out because I guess I was walking out. Uh, uh, 1980, Senate Jud Judiciary Committee unanim unanimously approves nomination of Judge Anthony Kennedy to U.S. Supreme Court. I think you have uh, one more, right? No, you need two more. You there? Um. Hello? Okay. Um, 
I, I think your mic is not working. I see your green light lighting up. I, I'm going to take this one for now, then. Uh, 1989, Detroit Red Wings center Steve Yzerman became the fourth NHL player to record 100 points in 50 games or less with a goal and two assists as Red Wings beat Toronto 8-1. All right. All right, I'm back. Oh, I there lost. you are. Okay, yeah. But it's okay. You can continue where you were off, and then I'll continue again after. I don't All mind. All right. 1990, we have Australian Open's women's, women's tennis. Steffi Graf defeated U.S. Mary Jo Fernandez 6-3, 6-4 for her third consecutive Australian singles crown. And 1991, Australian Open men's tennis. Boris Becker of Germany won his first Australian title, defeated Ivan Lendl 1-6, 6-4, 6-4, 6-4. Wow. Oh, a pretty uh, weak start there, and then he just uh, banged it out consistently. That's impressive. Oh, man, you get to talk about Mike Tyson. Oh, shoot. Nice. All right. In 1992, Mike Tyson goes on trial for rape. He is found guilty. Oh, shit. Yeah, Mike Tyson. Oh, no. That's so weird because that was the original name for my dog, too, because she looks like Mike Tyson. But that, um, because the thing is, he has like a one color. You should, yeah, tattoo, like the face. you should tattoo the tattoos on your dog's face. <laughs> or just like change the fur color or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah, but then I changed it to Sweetheart. I'm so glad it wasn't that because, wow, oh my god. If I, if I had that, people would have like heard about this. They would have been like, what? Your dog is named after a rapist? No. <laughs> no. Okay, let's see. Oh my god. <laughs> like, no. That's so no, thank you. That's such a silly situation. Holy crap. <laughs> no, that would be so bad because it's like, imagine after this show and then they just say something and then it's like, oh yeah. Oh my goodness. You know, nah, that couldn't be me. Yeah. Okay, let's start the man. Oh no, Bill Clinton. Let's see. In 1992. Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Gee, I know what that means, but I'm, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. I oh, you're this. allowed to. Well, okay, so yeah, he's a de- he's a dem or Democrat, yeah. Yeah. yeah but, uh, let's see. Go for Which it. I'm not saying is wrong. Every side, but okay. And Jennifer Flowers accuse each other of her uh, assertion that. Can has you speak a- closer to the mic? I can barely hear you. Oh, okay. So in 1992, presidential candidate Bill Clinton, a Democrat. Or and Jennifer Flowers accuse each other of lying over her assertion they had a 12-year affair. Oh man, that's not good. Well, but what I was trying to so. say about with like whether he's Democrat or not, I just, in my opinion, I just feel like well, no. We're side not getting there. into the politics. It's just he was a Democrat. No, I know. You know this is a history show. I'm just, I'm you know, just saying that's like, on my side. Yeah. I'm apolitical. That's I'm just speaking my own. Yeah. I'm I don't get political. Myself. Yeah, no, yeah. like you know, we know. we stick to the history. You know, as long as we stick to history, we're sticking to facts. And with facts, they can't come after us until they decide to. So. Yeah. Nineteen ninety-six. Oh wait, okay, this is the women's tennis. So uh, Australian. So nineteen ninety-six, Australian Open women's tennis. Monica Seles beats Anki Huber of Germany six-four, six-one for her first. And only Grand Slam victory after her stab stabbing okay. stabbing stabbing yes uh, so uh, like there's been uh, several I guess that's a tennis term uh, no so she was actually attacked um, oh okay oops my bad yeah no there's been several incidents in the sporting world like uh, there's one famous one involving uh, figure skating or something where. Uh, this uh, this rival uh, hired a or like paid her bodyguard to uh, to attack uh, this other skater and stuff and this is uh, with tennis you know somebody got stabbed I don't know the exact semantics um, but, um, oh. but yeah it's, it's, things get real with sports wow yeah I see that. I never knew it gets that like serious the ice yeah no people have died like. People have put Holy hits on each hell. other and stuff, you know, poisonings, you know, things like that. It's, it's absolutely insane. I mean, oh, at fun. the end of the day, you know, it's money, you know. And how, how are you going to get the most money? You know, you, you, it's a cutthroat. So. Holy shit. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yep.
Yep, welcome to the real world. Wow. I mean, no, I, d I never doubted it. I've never said, oh yeah, that doesn't happen. I'm not gonna lie to you, but I mean, holy shit, over sport, bro? Yep. Whoa. People go crazy. Hey, maybe if it was a fighting sport, holy hell, maybe that's crazy. Yo, are you I'm walking sorry, around, got, or I, is there a fan nearby or something? I'll be honest, yeah, I'm walking my dog. Ah, uh, okay. Bad. That's why. I'm probably far from my phone when I move it around. Yeah, I'm just gonna try to keep it close to me like this possible, like this. Yeah, that'd be that'd be okay. awesome because like cause I can hear you like coming in and out, like like you're moving your arm. Oh, uh, okay, my bad. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> okay, so still my go or is this like yours? Thing? Um, I think it's my turn now. So I'm gonna take us up into 1997, the 24th American Music Awards. Tony Braxton and Alanis Morissette won. All right, uh, Alanis Morissette. I don't know how to pronounce that name. Then we got uh, Australian Open Women's Tennis 2001. Jennifer Caprit Capritai won her first Grand Slam title, defeated Martina Hingis at 6-4, 6-3. And we got a music single, 2004, yeah! Single released by Usher featuring Lil Jon and Ludacris. Grammy Award Best Rap Slash Song comp uh, Compilation 2005. Warbird Song of the Year 2004. Never heard of that, but okay. Then um, we got another Australian Open Women's Tennis here, 2007. Serena Williams defeated Maria Sharapova, Sh 6-1, 6-2. To to First time the tournament used Hawkeye system for official line calls. Huh. Hawkeye system. What is the Hawkeye system? Let's check this out here. Hawkeye system. Uh, it is one of the gold line technology GLT systems authorized by FIFA. Uh, FIFA. Thought they were football. Uh, Hawkeye tracks the ball and informs the referee if a ball fully crosses the goal line into the goal. The purpose of the system is to eliminate errors in assessing if a goal was scored. Nice. So for further reading on the Hawkeye system, please refer to the underbar in the description, uh, which will have a link to this in 3, 2, 1, save. Alright. And back to you, 2008, good sir. All right, so back in 2008, Australian Open Men's Tennis, Novik Dokovic beats Joel Wilson, Julian Gah, and Prince. From 4 to 6, 6 to 4, 6 to 3, 7 to 6, to become first Serbian player to win a, Gerald, a Grand Slam title. Hey, did you hear me? Hello? Oh, I had my microphone muted. Um, yeah, uh, look at that oh, guy's okay. neck. That's a oh, long neck. Wow. Yeah, his head is a tennis racket. But, uh, what do you Didn't know tennis head giraffes? Tennis head giraffes. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Doom Guy, where have you been, man? <clears throat> yeah, I'm well, Let him go, but I don't mind. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Swanson. Like, if you don't mind, while you're out walking your dog, uh, I'll just take your turns if that's all right. Oh, go for it. My bad. Yeah, because yeah, I know my quality can be bad when I'm outside. And trust me, it's all good. Okay. Um, Doom Guy, do you want to take a few? Sure. Is that all? Is that, is that, is that all Springsteen? Yes, it is. Ah, uh, yeah. In 2009, Columbia Records releases Bruce Springsteen's 16th studio album, Working on a Dream, made with the E Street Band. <laughs> e. <laughs> e. Bruce. I saw a meme um, where it was like, Remember that brief moment in history where everything in the meme world collapsed and we just reverted to just E? And it's just like, uh, like, uh, that one guy from Shrek, it's, it's all distorted, just like the big capital E. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's, uh, Lord Farquaad with Markiplier's face. Oh, yeah, that one. And it's cropped onto Keanu Reeves' body. 
<laughs> but it's, him wearing, it's, it's Keanu Reeves in his gray suit, I think. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Whilst walking on the red carpet, so I was like, I was like huh. That's a, that's a rather odd choice of a meme. <laughs> oh shit. Almost punted a bowl to the moon, oh my god. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> a bowl to the moon. <laughs> There was a bowl on the floor. I didn't see it, and I kicked it. I was like, "Oh, like, oh, jeez." Okay, that's there. Why is there a there. bowl on the floor? I have no idea. Other than to feed the cat, I do not know. <laughs> anyway, 2013. In 2013, Magnus Carlson wins the 2013 Tata Steel Chess Tournament. All right. Oh, I'm definitely gonna take this one. <laughs> In 2017, Donald Trump, that's me, issues executive order banning a travel to the U.S. for seven mostly Muslim countries and suspending admission for refugees. And it was President Donald Trump and I approved his message. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're watching. <laughs> But I was like reading <laughs> Trump and trying to mouth yeah, as you were reading. <laughs> yeah, I've seen you do that. I was like, <laughs> I was like yes. Uh, another I, example I of agree. us sharing a brain cell again. <laughs> yes, precisely. <laughs> 2018 Australian Open women's tennis, Caroline Wozniacki defeated Simona Halep 7-6, 3-6, 6-4. To win her first Grand Slam title. Hmm. And then uh, 2019 NFL Pro Bowl Camping World Stadium in Orlando, Florida. AFC beats NFC 26 to 7. That's a thrashing. MVPs Patrick Mahomes, Kansas City Chiefs quarterback. Jamal Adams, New York Jets uh, safety. Yes. All right. And then in 2022. Uh, Brandon pledged to nominate a black woman to the Supreme Court. Okay, who cares? Like, I nominate. Anyway, before we move on to the person that's audience, were there any articles that grabbed your attention more than most? Anything you wish we'd elaborated more about? Anything you would have liked to say had you been here? Start a dialogue in the comments section. Anyway, Mr. Uh, Doom Guy, do you want to start us off in bursts? 1443? Uh, yeah. Let me help. I'll get right on that thing. In 1443, Albert, Duke, the Duke of Saxony, died. Oh, yeah, yeah, Duke of Saxony, Albert, was born in 1443, died in 1500. Huh. Good old Albert. Oh. Hey! Hey, there's a legend there. Ah. In 1756, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, Austrian musical prodigy and composer, The Marriage of Figaro, and Jupiter Symphony, born in Salzburg, Austria. Figaro! Exactly, yes. In the year 1775, Frederick... Frederick... Yeah, Frederick... <laughs> That makes sense, yeah. <laughs> in 1775, Frederick Wilhelm Joseph Schelling, Schelling, German philosopher, views on Christianity, born on, in Leonsburg, Württemberg, Holy Roman Empire. Dang, that was before it became the uh, Ottoman Empire. The Hrick. We have Lewis Carroll, 1832, an English author, Alice in Wonderland, born in Daresbury, England. Hmm. Sorry, I had to sneeze. Died in 1898. And then we have Edward Smith, 1850, English naval captain of the RMS Titanic, born in, ha in Hainley, Staffordshire. Died in uh, 1912 with the ship, went down with the Titanic. So, yep. Hmm. We also have Samuel Gompers, 1850, an American Labor Union leader, American Federation of Labor, born in London, England, died in 1924. All right. Ooh, this guy. Hey, it's the guy, the no the sound effect guy. No, just that's a different Wilhelm. <laughs> we, we just, we're gonna call, we're gonna call him the actual Wilhelm. 
We're gonna call him the Wilhelm Scream. <laughs> From now oh, on. we made that sound when you lost the First World War. <laughs> In 1859, Wilhelm II, German Emperor and King of Prussia. 1888 to 1918, born in Berlin. In the year 1885, Jerome Kern, American Broadway and film composer, showboat in Roberta, born in New York City, New York. Yeah, this. Uh, hey, I'm walking here. This, uh, this Harry Potter looking guy mixed with some other stuff. He's walking here. Yep. Well, put it on, I'm walking here. Hey, I'm Brooklyning here. Huh, this is an <laughs> interesting name. Yes. In the year 18, well, yeah, 1836. Yeah, this guy's 187. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that, him say, they're, they're only saying 87 to make him look young. Um, anywho, Samuel C. C. King. It's his 87th birthday today. 1936, American physicist and Nobel Nobel laureate. 1976, whatever the hell those two symbols are. Well, the one J and a trident particle. <laughs> J slash trident particle. <laughs> Born in N. N. Arbor, Michigan. I think that stands for Jules and maybe Watts or something. So. <laughs> no, no, it's just a jewel, like the like the thing you like the thing you inhale. No, no, no. Just inhale the jewel. <laughs> I just mess with you. No, the jewel. No, no, no. That's a, a, right. a power unit, jewels. I know. Like, yeah, no. I, I, yeah, I was, yeah. I was, trying to, I was trying to make a cruddy joke. I know. I was, I was stopping. Yes. Yeah. To save our uh, our audience some dying brain cells. <laughs> uh, but yeah, pretty well, sure they already, we've already, they've already lost many. <laughs> that is true. They do watch us. But let's see here. What is this? Uh, oh, P.S. Psi Greek. Psi. Uh, it's the twenty third letter of the Greek alphabet and is associated with a numeric value of seven hundred. Okay, but uh, uh, what, what what is this power value? Article. Bro, when you said Sia, think about Gangnam Style. Yeah. I... Oh, J PSI Mason. Uh, the the, the J slash Trident Mason or Scion is a subatomic particle, a flavor neutral meson consisting of a charm quark and a charm anti quark. Mesons formed by a bound state of a charm quark and a charm anti quark are generally known as a charmonium. Sounds like I'm talking about Pokemon. Um, anyway. Wow. Well, yeah, no, we got new, we got these new Pokemon variants. Uh, Charmander has an electrical type. It's a, it's a lightning type. <laughs> it's just a trident. Charmander has a trident. Oh my god. Just a, tri a red trident with eyes. Anyway, 1979, we have Rosamund Pike. Uh, British actress, Gone Girl, an education and a private war, the and the Wheel of Time. Wow. Born in London. 44 today. Happy birthday. You know, in a lot of movies there, it looks like. And then, uh, 2014, we have Like Nasia, born in Krasnodar Kray, Russia. She's nine today. Why is she even on this list? What has she done? Like, yeah. oh, she might be a TV personality. Yeah, there's a television here. So, maybe. Anyway, I think she's on, she's on a TV show. Ah, uh, okay. Might anyway, be. back to you, good sir. Uh, 98 AD. Uh, in the year 98 AD. Nerva. Nerva. Eh. Uh, Roman Emperor. 96 to 98. Dies of a stroke at about 67. Dang. I think Jesus. we spoke about him, actually, earlier on the top of the show. Um, Damn. Did we? Let's see here. I was gonna. I was no, gonna did. make it. I was gonna make a joke, but I'm gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna wait till after the show. All right. <laughs> oh, this guy. Ah. In 1816, Samuel Hood, 
First Viscount Hood, British Admiral in the American Revolutionary War, in the French Revolutionary Wars, dies at the age of 92. Wow, he lived a long life. So, yeah, That's so, impressive for back then. That's really impressive. Yeah. Too bad he was on the wrong side. Too bad he was red. Yeah. Well, well, too bad. Too bad his jacket was red. <laughs> well, his is blue in this picture, but yeah, he was. A, I mean, I mean, as in like what side? The he red was on. coat, yeah. Yeah, the red coat. Oh. Yeah. In 1851, John James Audubon. <laughs> Audubon. Okay, that that that's weird. Anywho, an American. Ornithologist and painter, the Birds of America, dies at 65. I want to check out this Birds of America thing here. So, the Birds of America. We only made it to retirement age. Huh. Huh. Alright. It only make it made it to retirement age. Yeah. Well, normal retirement age. Uh, well, for, for today, yeah. At Back the time, then. What the time of Probably would have been mid forties, maybe early forties. I don't know. Yeah. Back then, yeah. We have James G. Blaine uh, died on this date in eighteen ninety three. Was a U.S. Secretary of State from eighteen eighty one and eighteen eighty nine through ninety two. Known as the Plumed Knight, died at sixty two. Plumed Knight. That's weird. Hmm. Uh, uh, you know what? I uh, we don't have uh, too much time left, so I'm gonna leave it up to the viewers. To educate us, what, why was he called the Plume Knight? And we also have Giuseppe Verdi, 1901, Italian opera composer Regoletto La Travetera, uh, died at the age of 77. Hmm. All right. And I believe it is back to you, good sir. Uh, yeah, yeah. In the year 1922, Nellie Bly, American journalist and writer. Ten days in a mad house dies at the age of fifty-seven. Dang. Hmm. I'm trying to find. Um, well, here we go. He became known as the Plume Knight. Um, why is it not telling me this? Uh, oh, come on. Hold on. Because because this is bugging me. Um, what was he best known for? Um. Okay, he, he's had a lot of, uh, you know what, I'm just going to leave it as a, uh, as a, um, audience, uh, I, I can't think. Anyway, go ahead. Anywho, in the year 1972, Mahalia Jackson, American gospel singer, whole world in his hands, dies of a heart failure at 60. Oh, that's a good song. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Ooh. Oh, oh yeah, legend, legend right here. Andre the Giant in the year 1993 he was a French pro wrestler in the WWF World Heavyweight. Actually, he won a WWF World Heavyweight Championship in 1988 or ni yeah 1988, a WWF World Tag Team Championship with Haku. In 1989, and he died of congestive heart failure at the age of 49. Damn. He actually has one of the longest reigning reigning championship belts, or he's one of the longest reigning championship in in that whole sports history. It's like 15 it. years or something. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I, he was a, he was really good in Princess Bride too. Mm -hmm. we we'll got, say uh, though. Oh yeah. We got Jack Parr here in 2004. He was a U.S. comedian and TV host of the Jack Parr Show and the Tonight Show, 1957 through 62. Died at 85. Wow. Oh, damn. Yeah. We have uh, Shutaro, uh, yeah, no, Shuharto, 2008, an Indonesian army officer and second president of Indonesia, 1967 through 98. That's a long term. Died at the age of 86. Wow. Hmm. And so he, he resigned at 76, it looks like, because he lived for another 10 years. 
<laughs> we have Howard Zinn, 2010, a U.S. historian and activist, a people's history of the United States, died of a heart attack at 87. Well, I mean, that's up there, you know, in age, so. And back to you, sir. In the year 2010, J.D. Stallinger, who was an American novelist, wrote The Catcher in the Rye, dies at the age of 91. Whoo! Oh, he lasted. He lived for a long time. Yeah, the catcher in the rye. I think it's banned in schools now, but you know, it was. It, it used to be in schools intentionally because it was, you know, um, um, uh, controversial. Yeah. Like you know, like that, that's the whole point of education to teach critical thinking, to to be challenged on your beliefs. You know. Yeah. Anywho, in the year night or in the year, yeah year yeah blah, 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 blah. brain fart. Sorry about that. <laughs> in the year 2018, Ingvar Kamprad, a Swedish a Swedish eccentric businessman and founder of IKEA and author of The Testament of a Furniture Dealer, dies at the age of 91. Well, he was up there. That's who made Ikea. Yeah. What did he die of? Uh, natural causes, I believe, then. Why do you have to give us cheap junk? <laughs> <laughs> no, right? And, like, you always have Actually, extra no, pieces and all cool, that though. stuff, and all sorts of confusing. Actually, no, that's... Oh, no, I... Oh, wait, we have the wrong... Oh, no, we were thinking about the wrong thing. Never mind. No, he... No, Ikea's fine. <laughs> Ikea's all right. Ikea's, you know, mainly for, you know, people moving into an apartment, need some, you know, quick furniture... You know, stuff like that. They had got good food. And when I was a kid, uh, the, uh, our, like the Ikea we went to had like a whole children's section. There was like, you know, mm -hmm. you know like a ball pit with one of those like, you know, play place things around, like all the padding and all this stuff. Then there was like this auditorium area. And then there was like this other room that was like, uh, like, you know, had like, uh, like TV stuff in there. It was a really fun area. Mm. So. But anyway, uh, that shall conclude the show. Once again, you can check the underbar in the description for any links you may find interesting, including but not limited to all things Omni Coalition. For your dose of past events daily, we stream every day at 10 in the morning, uh, which is um, uh, 11 uh, Mountain, uh, 12 Central. And 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yep. And uh, please go check out our other... Uh, our other um, our other places, the Omni Coalition YouTube is where we're going to be streaming live uh, sometime soon, um, and uh, all the other stuff I uh, expect to uh, expect it to come out about an hour and a half to two hours after the stream. Anyway, for all of you and all of us, I am Alexander. I am Chef Russell. <laughs> no, you're not. You're Let's Country Broncos Ride. Hey, I am Chef Russell. Look at just look at my profile picture. I'm Chef Russ. <laughs> I'm Danger Ross Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Unlimited. All right. Now, and can tell you catch us tomorrow, or if you're interested in some news, notable events, weather, and sports, that is coming up sometime at around 3 or so uh, p.m. Pacific time on uh, Rumble and BitChute. Uh, anyway, until uh, until next time you see us, uh, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection, rate five thumbs, and subscribe. Toodles! Toodles! <laughs>